Alrighty guys, so we're starting to work on the race sleds finally. It's just starting in September. I figure uh, probably should start now uh, and get, get a start on things. So what's on the agenda today is I took my windshield off, which the other two guys here are very upset that I took that windshield off. I don't think it looks that bad and then I can shorten the bars up a lot. It makes everything feel a little bit more stable when you don't have those 12 inch riser on there. <laughs> Yeah, so that I had the black windshield down here. I have no windshield now. Um, I've seen a lot of guys with enticers just don't run them, and I kind of feel the same way. It just kind of makes everything look a little bit shorter. Um, I like Mark's just because the sheer fact of Mark's is lower than mine, and then with his windshield, just actually kind of it almost looks natural with that short windshield he put on. Yours look totally natural. Not a chance. All natural. So we had issues with Mark's last year. Obviously, we had engine failure. That's in the process of getting worked on. But we also have track clips that are missing. So what he's doing is taking the chain case apart. We're going to pull the drive axle, pull the skid, pull the track, obviously. And uh, we'll kind of get to let you know what we all take apart to, to do that. Last year, we did go through every bearing on this sled, both of our sleds. So we don't have to really service the bearings. We're just going to keep them oiled up. Um, we shouldn't have to take the chain case side off. We should be able to take the speedometer side on the left side. That'll give us enough room to slide the axle out of the seal and bearing and then out the bottom is my theory. We should be able to leave it on there. The oil looks pretty clean. Someone's going to get pulled. Um, you can see the tri they use triple rollers on the exciters. And it looks very well lubricated. If you guys want uh, any ideas for, for mixture of what you should put in the chain case, it's around like 70%. 80, 90, 30% automatic transmission fluid. Just gives it a little bit thinner um, characteristics and less resistance that way. So, you can see here we're also gonna be working on, Mark's bars are gonna get shortened in terms of the left side, it's a little bit long. And I'm also gonna shorten them up possibly a little bit. I'm gonna come down um, probably with our homemade risers here, we're gonna shorten them up probably two inches and then shorten up the end of his left side. I, uh, I accidentally cross-treaded the yeah. threaded rod inside the pipe and then I cross-treaded. Well actually no, there's a piece of slag in it and then when yeah. I was going in <laughs> it went tight and then when I went loose it got tight again. So yep. We just left it right there which is a little long. Exactly. And then I still have to take out all the foam out of my hood. Mark said he, already, he, he had a fun time last year. He already did his and it's not a fun time. It doesn't look pretty either. It's, it's not the best but it, it definitely helps. Wait, you can see every little razor blade mark. Oh boy. 70s glue. Dude. They, they Just did terrible. Job. Freaking aviation sealant or something. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of front end work, we still got to get our, we're getting uh, billet aluminum spreaders. And then also we got another set of ski boots. We got to fit those. One of us will use the PVC for another year. One of us will use the new ski boot, uh, boots. And then. Unless we get some Unless we go to the swap meet in a couple weeks and we find another set of them. We're also putting a new tack on Mark's, another two pulse, basically the exact same tack that I have. And we're gonna make a little bracket off of my steering post and then just have the tack kind of over here. Otherwise I'm looking down at it all the time on the starting line and it's, it's just annoying. Mark's is just smaller. I think you got the... Hey, pause, Mark's just small. <laughs> yeah, big pause. And you can see he's trying to mock up, that's the right side foot guard. Oh, Guppy? Guppy. Oh, yeah. Well, if you had to, you could always cut, you could even cut that, oh, yeah, that let's take thing off. Support. The rivets out. We'll make, I'll make something work. With that, oh, yeah. sweet. Sure. Or we can put it on yours. It but you can see on his, we just have a two pulse tack out of like an 80s indie. It's real small, and uh, it, it worked obviously. But it's better to have those bigger, easier to read tacks, uh, less squinting and, and stuff like that. So we're gonna keep moving. We'll update you guys on what's going on and uh, as we make progress today. Made some progress on the sleds. Skids are out on both, and the track is out on the exciter. Um, found some scary stuff underneath the exciter. The tunnel uh, accidentally got beat up by the studs. So part of it's because our skid's a little bit too far up in the tunnel, I think. So 
We'll do some adjustments there and we'll put a piece of uh, plastic and rivet it in up in the tunnel just to protect against that from happening again. Mine, I could see evidence a little bit, not nearly as bad. Uh, it was pretty bad, but not too bad. And uh, we're gonna obviously skid swap mine. I got another skid down here that I picked up. So there's one right there that's gonna have to get swapped with you know certain components. Um, new, we'll put my wheels on and new set of slides and loop system has to get transferred over. We can already see we broke one of the self tappers off in the slide rail. And this thing's been welded on too many times. Like we've welded it, it's been welded before we owned it. So all the shafts are bent, everything's worn out. So it'd be nice to, to get a new one just to help with efficiency in terms of suspension, hopefully will work. Um, his exciter suspension is pretty good. Uh, other than we have to clip his track, the track clips are pretty beat up. They were catching on the slides and taking them off and then the top guide blocks were getting worn off in the back pretty excessively. So I also took the windshield off mine. Front end skis, we gotta do, like I said, new spreaders and then we gotta tighten up all the, the spindle play with some shims. Pretty much shim stock it or, or uh, soda cans some guys use, but got to paint the skis even though they were brand new last year, they're already rusting. The black leaf spring I'm talking about on the bottom. And then just a lot of little fabrication stuff has got to go into place. Um, other than that, like I said, we'll have to put my new suspension in and then we'll do a video and get that all put back together. And then track clipping, we'll try to do a little bit on that. Obviously, we've never really done it, so we'll be learning along the way. Uh, otherwise, the chain case stuff, we just took apart the left side where the speedometer drive would be. And there's a big nut, 27 millimeter on that. And then a housing. Just took the sprockets off the chain case and left the case on the unit, which was nice, and then slid the drive axle out. Everything's basically sitting in front uh, in the hood area on the exciter. Oh, somebody got hurt outside. <laughs> and under the hood here, I'm getting intel on putting a hydraulic brake set up on one of these. I'm going to see how difficult it is. If it's going to be too much dicking around, we're just going to go with the cable brakes again for another year. Um, obviously, my motor's still in. Everything should be good engine-wise. Some gearing adjustments, and I'm going to cut a new chain to length for the chain case. Do a little video on that. I got to remove the foam, like I was saying, in my hood. You can see it's still factory in there. So that's going to be a fun couple hour job there, scraping. And uh, that's about it. So we'll get some more videos when we keep working on them. We just wanted to get a little start on it today. And so that's what we got going on. We're going to fabricate some foot guards yet. That'll be another project, but the main thing is getting the track done, clipped, and making sure that it's going to be safe to use and not eat slides every race, because that sucks. And then obviously we're not going to try to beat the tunnel up too much. And then we got to do some sewing on that seat yet too. Yeah, so. I think fish line. Fish line might work good. So that's where we're at. It'd be nice to get hydraulic brakes on these things, just because the cable brakes suck. We already did that on the exciter. Um, basically, you want to use a Willwood Articat brake setup, um, and you make a little bracket off the chain case to hold the master or the caliper, and then the rotor just goes on the jack shaft. You can either get it remachined, or if you're like us, we welded the rotor on. Yeah. So that's what we did. At least it worked um, because our keyway fell out instantly because we just slotted it and <laughs> didn't put anything on the key, and it fell out, and we almost. Could have had a bad accident, but we realized that it didn't, didn't have brakes early enough. So it didn't hurt anybody, but we'll go over our loop system again once we get the skids going back in, how that all is working, and then in terms of just general setup and what we're doing with the handlebars and, and that kind of stuff. So if you guys have questions along the way and you're building one of these too, we'll try to answer all the questions uh, that you have, and hopefully we'll all learn something this year again.